Okay, let's dive into this LFO. So we've seen like in the VCO, we have a somewhat limited VCO one. And even though it looks like a limited envelope generator, there's a lot of functions there. This LFO is one of my favorite LFOs of all time. And this is just the monologue. No, they've done some really cool things with the LFO that I would like to have seen in a number of older or more vintage analog synthesizers because they're really, really fun. And they're probably done with software, so that's why they weren't. But I don't care because they're really, really cool. Let's dive into it. Okay, if we want low frequency oscillation on pitch, all we have to do is switch it to pitch, uh, choose a rate. Um, I'm gonna start with the slow setting because it makes the most sense. And I'm just gonna have it on the triangle, which basically sounds like a sine wave. So let's hear what that sounds like. So there we have LFO affecting the frequency of actually both oscillators. So yeah, that just sounds like your standard LFO. And here, let's, let's mess with the rate. Okay, and there is the highest rate you can hit which is just right on the verge of audio. So the slow setting on the LFO is very much like a traditional analog LFO that you would find on vintage synthesizers. It doesn't go into the audio range and it sounds uh, pretty straightforward. But some of you may have noticed something, or maybe you didn't. I only turned the intensity halfway up. So actually, that's what LFOs sort of traditionally sound like, uh, just kind of, and if you have it applied to pitch, it's just kind of that siren sort of sound. But usually they don't have a great deal of breadth. They don't have the depth that you wish they did, but this LFO does. Let's uh, turn it, the intensity all the way up. So we're basically going, if it isn't the entire spread of the frequency, it's something relatively close and certainly more than we'd expect. So this is a serious LFO. Yeah, we're going from the clicks all the way up to the highest audible frequencies. I mean, this is this LFO modulation is the entire range of the oscillator's frequency, which I think is fantastic. I mean, I find myself craving that in a lot of synthesizers. So you got this sort of motorboat, motorboat sort of sound there. Not that kind of motorboat, come on people. Okay, so that is pretty straightforward. We also have like this square wave. Which <laughs> apparently at that high intensity just is too much. With that uh, range, you get just turning the intensity up and down, you get some really cool effects. And of course, sawtooth wave. If this LFO stopped right there, I would be deeply impressed. That's a really cool set of features. Uh, well, I mean, it's standard set of features, but simply having the intensity go to the entirety of the range of the oscillator on the pitch setting is just something really, really cool. And we haven't even started. It's maddening. Uh, uh, the LFO should be an easy thing to explain uh, or a quick thing to explain anyway. So, okay, now let's move on. There's a bunch of directions we could go right here, but I'm just going to go on to shape. Let's make this reasonable again and apply it to the shape of this oscillator. Let's put it on sawtooth. So now we're cycling through the range of the shape on oscillator one, which means that we are changing the timbre of the oscillator over time, which is really cool. So if you put that on a really low rate, that uh, wave shape's just gonna 
keep changing. Let's actually make it change a little faster. <laughs> So then it becomes an effect and a really cool one too. Uh, oh man, there's so much. My brain is breaking as I'm thinking of all the things I should be talking about here. Okay, but that's only halfway intensity. So let's turn the intensity all the way up. I think that is the entire range of the shape knob. So that is a really, it's like pulse width modulation, but you can do it with your sawtooth, triangle, and uh, traditional pulse width modulation with your square wave. Uh, let us turn up the rate though. Kind of a cool effect. Uh, yeah, so you can change uh, the rate of that shape modulation uh, up to the bottom or just before audio range modulation. And it gives you a fair amount of effect. I like this stuff that's sort of up to one third. Remember that it's shape and oscillator two and one. So you get the waveform really changing as two different oscillators change with it. Having it set to different waves means different wave shape changes. As you can see in the wave. Really cool effect. And uh, also we can always direct it to the cutoff. And with that uh, great intensity, it's going the entire range of the cutoff. And of course your setting of the cutoff uh, will affect how the modulation occurs to the cutoff. And you could set it to a modest setting where the intensity is relatively low and the rate is relatively low. Really nice and sounds great. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot you can do with that. And it's a lot of fun. We've only really, this has only been a third. All the things we've just covered, which would have been uh, perhaps more than some other LFOs, uh, and we're only a third of the way through that. Okay, let's let's switch this back to pitch. And then we're gonna go to, well, uh, yeah, I don't know why. Let's just do it. I'm confused because there's too much to show you. I'm gonna click this to fast. Now, yeah, we didn't even explore the way that the square wave or the sawtooth wave could have modulated those things as well, but it could have. So um, <laughs> here is where things get really wacky. With the fast, it's like some sort of super, it's like audio range and beyond. It's the, the fastest LFO I have ever seen. Let's listen to it. Okay, I have it just on pitch. Let's go back to one oscillator. 
okay, you're like, wow, okay, that sounds like the other LFO. But let's listen to the rate. Uh, there at the end, it just seemed to go away, didn't it? It's because it got so fast. Okay, let's turn up the intensity. I'm gonna turn it up all the way so you can hear what's gonna happen. Okay, here's our rate. So the intensity is again, the entire range of the audio portion of the oscillator. And then we're gonna apply this rate, these rates at these, yeah. We're gonna apply these incredible rates. It goes way into the audio range. I don't even know how far into the audio range that is, but man, listen to that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there's another knob you could just sit and crank on that isn't the cutoff. It is the LFO rate on the fast setting because it just creates all of these really crazy outcomes from modulating a frequency with really, really high frequencies. So earlier when I was talking about ways that you could use the envelope generator on various effects, I wondered if you thought, well, what kind of effects? What are you talking about? When you are when you have an LFO that creates speeds like this and you can modulate that LFO using the motion control, which we're gonna talk about, so you could actually be cranking on that knob, program that cranking into the motion section, which we'll talk about and I'm sure I'll demonstrate, and then you have you know the various things you can do with the envelope and you're gonna come up with some really cool effects. <laughs> 